Gareth Hughes. Uh, yeah, I've given the call. I'm sorry if you didn't hear uh, it. Gareth Hughes. Kia ora, Mr. Speaker. Namahinu i kia koutou. Kia ora. Mr. Speaker, we stand poised on the brink, ushering a new dark age for students. It's going to be a fundamental change to what our universities look like in the coming years. Mr. Speaker, this bill is quite simply as an ideological solution in search of a problem. Mr Speaker, I'm proud to be voting against this bill, as will the Green Party, and we urge the government benches to reconsider. It's not too late. I urge the Minister of Tertiary Education, Stephen Joyce, he's got one last chance to reconsider allowing this bill to pass. It's essential that we have strong student associations to deliver strong quality education outcomes, to have a vibrant university culture, to have a place where foreign students want to come, to have a place where future Olympians have a university games to go, to go uh, perform at, to have a place where people feel safe and there are critical evaluations like sexual health audits of the university, things like this. Mr Speaker, lastly, Mr Joyce can't delay, uh, he can't bring this bill in as urgently as we are. It's unfair, Mr Speaker. It's impractical. And quite frankly, it's irresponsible of the government benches to be allowing this bill to proceed with such a limited time with implementation. The fact is, it's like Mr Joyce has announced he's disbanding local government in New Zealand and telling them, well, if you, want it, if you like the roads, if you like the water services, you'll voluntarily pay for it. And by the way, you've only got three months to prepare. Mr Speaker, it's unfair, irresponsible and impractical. We did see the dawn of this new age 10 years ago. Mr Speaker, a short history of voluntary student membership in New Zealand is that we did see it uh, across the ditch. People are saying, what will the impact be? We don't have to theorise. We saw it across the ditch in Australia and we saw student associations uh, become destroyed. We saw worse student outcomes and we saw the government step in and have to bail them out with $120 million. In New Zealand, 1997, National, uh, sorry, New Zealand First MP Michael Laws uh, had the voluntary student membership bill through Parliament, and in the end, a compromise was reached because he couldn't get the numbers for the strictly voluntary student membership bill, which saw a referenda uh, held across each campus in New Zealand. We saw some choose to go to an opt in, an opt in model. Uh, many chose an opt out model, and what we saw was that uh, universities like Waikato literally sell, flog off their assets built up over decades by students saving a little bit every year, get flogged off before going to an opt-out model. Ultimately, this compromise uh, to have, for students to choose saved it. Now, it's disappointing, Mr Speaker, that what we haven't seen uh, over that period, and I think uh, we should honestly reflect in this Parliament that some flaws weren't addressed, we should have taken the opportunity earlier to look at the uh, opt-out model for those institutions that chose to go with an opt-out model to make it easier, more universal across the country, to have it better explained. And perhaps NZUSA and the student associations could have taken the opportunity earlier uh, on to critically and voluntarily review their role, their services, because uh, there have been some legitimate grievances which haven't been addressed and perhaps they could have been addressed earlier. But to all those people who have campaigned against this disastrous bill, I say big ups to you, I take my hat off to you. Uh, you've stayed staunch, you've campaigned creatively, smartly, intelligently. I think you quite clearly won the debate, but unfortunately what we're seeing tonight is we're losing the war. We saw 98% of submitters opposed to the bill in the select committee. We've seen polling from diverse groups like National Rural Woman to other UMR poll, I believe it was, opposing it. On the select committee, we travelled all around the country and it was a privilege to um, be with the other members and I'd like to thank those submitters for their submissions and the very able cheering of Alan Peachy. What we heard was the experiences students have in our universities around the country. We heard the experiences of Waikato who flogged off those hard built up student assets built up over decades. We heard about future Olympians being at risk from the loss of university games. We heard about uh, those institutions which have forced to sign a compulsory uh, levy with the institution. Uh, we heard from AUSA, one of the only institutions in New Zealand to have the opt-in model. 
feel as if they're under the thumb of the institution and they don't feel they can critically review the institution. We heard from the Australian example and the $120 million going into help transition. And I asked the national benches, where is the transition plan from your side? Where is the support, be it financial or other resources? And there's none. They want student associations to fail and it's disappointing we're seeing this. Because the fact is student associations do do a fantastic job representing students, advocating on students' behalf and providing those services. As we saw in Christchurch in the aftermath of the earthquake, we saw students with the organisation and the resources of their association provide a key service in their community in the days and weeks following the catastrophe there. They play a critical role in our society. Universities need a student body that they can talk with, negotiate with. The government needs an organised student body that they can work with to deliver key quality education. Students still need services after this bill will pass, and the irony of this bill is that students will still be paying for their services, but they just won't have a say. Instead, with the upcoming legislation, it is going to be Stephen Joyce, not the students, who will be deciding what will and won't be funded with their student levies. Mr Speaker, quality education and a smart economy shouldn't be up for negotiation, and what we're seeing from this bill is a weakening of the student culture, the pastoral care that students need to succeed. And this bill, not once have I heard from the national members any mention about this bill being about educational outcomes or the big issues facing us and our economy. What at the heart of it is is two differing views of what our universities are. On one hand, we have a tiny ideological minority who see universities without the people, universities without community. And on the other hand, we see a strong, vibrant vision of a democratic, open, transparent student body. Mr Speaker, this bill isn't about freedom of association. It's simply a smokescreen. This bill is about appeasing a tiny ideological minority of ACT supporters who fail to gain any support through democratic means on the university campuses, so instead went to Parliament to legislate away students' ability to choose the system that works for them. This bill is about ACT and, disappointingly, the National Party telling students how to organise themselves, and in the process they will weaken and destroy, particularly the Polytech student associations. Mr Speaker, I believe what this bill is actually about is weakening an oppositional voice to the terrible and disastrous tertiary education policies we've seen under this government. At its heart, it is a philosophical question. What does being a member of a community mean? And what we see is a philosophical debate. I don't see student associations like the Automobile Association just providing a service. I see them more as a representative body, more akin to a local government or a local board at a local council level, because they do provide these essential representative and advocacy services. If this bill was actually about making sure students get the support they need, we would have actually worked harder on the Select Committee and not been party whipped into supporting this bill. And as you look seriously at the NZUSA's compromise of automatic membership with an easier opt-out, Mr Speaker, what I think is we need an enduring cross-party solution to this issue. And in future parliaments, we'll be looking to work with the Māori, Mana and Labour parties uh, to amend this legislation. The tragedy is, when we have a future government, maybe in three months or three years or six, what we will be seeing is a changing of this legislation. We're going to have two decades of flux in the student association area. We need an enduring cross-party solution, not an ideological partisan uh, solution in search of the problem we see tonight. So, Mr Speaker, we heard a few days ago from the tertiary education minister to tell students to keep their heads down because most people think they're OK. But I'd like to ask the tertiary education minister, will he keep telling students that it's OK and to keep their heads down when five of our six universities are dropping down the international rankings? Will he keep telling students to keep their heads down when it's Stephen Joyce telling students to organise themselves, not letting students organise themselves? Will he keep telling students to keep their heads down when his government is ignoring the clear wishes of students and the 98% of submitters who oppose this bill. I urge the National Party to reconsider and save this bill, but I'm not holding my breath because throughout they've shown a willingness not to listen to the facts, to literally uh, take an ideological partisan position, and it's disappointing, and ultimately the loser in all of this is students and quality education. Rahui Katini.